uh, I will talk about uh, uh, nodal and antinodal dichotomy <coughs> from the point of <coughs> holographic perspective. This work was done with Andrew Pagrov and uh, Misha Kelson and uh, Sasha Krikum. So at first, um, at first, <coughs> let's start with the point why we need um, holography. Uh, to so why um, why even we could think about holography in the context of high temperature superconductors. Um, so serious hopes for the understanding of this phenomenon, high temperature superconductivity, um, are related to the concept of a quantum critical point, um, an exotic state of matter uh, without with a <clears throat> dense entanglement and uh, without quasi particles, and therefore there is no Fermi liquid theory. And also, uh, this quantum critical point it is very hard to describe within the grammatic approach. And uh, so, but what, mm, what is important for a DSCFT correspondence that uh, we do not start from, from scratch when we start to consider our antinodal nodal dichotomy, but we also uh, so had an experience of previous works which used uh, holographic approach very successfully to describe some of the properties of the cuprates. As Misha Katzenson said in his commentary, we can think about it mostly as a phenological approach. So we uh, do not build our theory from the uh, so from the basic Hamiltonian and try to really describe real materials, but um, we can think about some properties and try to uh, build maybe simple, the most simple model which can describe this property. And if we can do this, okay, we can we can say that we have some nice approach to describe these phenological results. Okay, so one of these results is uh, linear temperature scaling of DC conductivity. And it was done by Davison and Shalman Zanon in their works. Uh, that a uh, holographic approach can effectively describe this linear scaling. Uh, so the correspondence provide this explanation in the normal states of cooperates relating to the general hydrodynamic properties of the system, uh, which say that uh, minimal viscosity proportional to the uh, entropy of the system. So, and this entropy can be described as, a, as the entropy of black hole. So, and with other uh, assumptions of uh, the matter, we can say that this entropy can be um, linear on temperature and we obtain linear, de linear dependence for the resistivity. So, another interesting result is uh, dependence of uh, the whole angle. Uh, so the whole angle is the temperature dependent ratio of the whole and DC conductivities. And so here it, it behaves like that. And uh, so in the work of Blake and Donos, it was shown that um, we can consider two uh, kinds of, uh, so, so li liquid consists of two fractions. One uh, is responsible for regular quasi-particles and another completely within a critical sector. And from this approach, we can obtain this kind of behavior of whole angle. So, and uh, the thought uh, of uh, phenological results is the following. So, uh, here on the right picture, uh, it is shown how uh, cooperates are layered um, uh, so layers of cooperate oxide are separated by insulating layers. So, and uh, basically the phenological result was uh, 
was derived in the work of, of Donas. And it was shown there that, uh, that uh, the interaction driven metal insulated transition causes endotropical colization. And exactly that uh, current can flow only in two dimensional plane, but uh, it cannot flow on the autoconal direction. So it reproduces this, uh, so these uh, structures of cuprates. And so this is what ab about uh, previous successful works on, uh, on holographical approach in the context of high temperature superconductivity. So, and the, our work are devoted to nodal antinodal dichotomy. So, uh, here in the picture, it is shown that Leach Fermi surfaces predicted by Ben theory, so they observed by Arpus for cuprates. So, but once the pseudo gap sets in, the antinodal regions of the Fermi surface are gapped out. So we see so so that these regions are suppressed, and so we can try to study this in the holographic perspective. So what 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 really can we do within this approach? So basically, some of the works uh, about uh, uh, possible uh, fermions already were done in previous works. Uh, so we we have no we have we have known from what we can start to describe the system. And uh, but the main idea of our approach is to uh, separate, uh, let's say, classical cl classical physics uh, containing quasi particles and real. Uh, strong correlation behavior, which can be captured by a uh, holographic approach. So I will, um, I will, I will repeat something of the, of, of the dictionary that Andrew Bagrov told in the previous uh, presentation. So what, what basically holographic approach does? So we have uh, the correspondence between classical gravity and uh, uh, quantum field theory on the boundary. What, what it is this conformal boundary? So this is just asymptotic solutions of this classical uh, and stain matter uh, equations. So and uh, so what we need? We need to uh, write some action for coupled matter gravity gauge theories, which can describe uh, our minimal setting in which we can produce these uh, Fermi surfaces. And then we should um, study asymptotics of these, um, of these solutions. So, and, uh, okay, we, um, uh, we need uh, to have some perturbations of our black holes because, um, so let's say um, uh, original works on ideas safety correspondence contains only uh, translationally invariant systems. So, uh, so solutions with very high order of symmetry, this ideas sp space. And uh, uh, if we add just black hole, we obtain some finite chemical potential temperature. And, uh, uh, but we need to uh, somehow uh, formulate the bro broken translation symmetry. So we need effectively encode in our system uh, the, uh, the periodic lattice. So what we do, so we study some deformed black hole with periodic boundary conditions. And these periodic boundary conditions are given by scalar fields. So, so this is just a minimal settings. Uh, we can think about it like uh, our periodically modulated uh, perturbation uh, of uh, conformal field theory. And then what we do, we set in fermions into this background and study Dirac equations. So in the uh, 
in the minimum in the minimal setting we do not consider uh, real coupling uh, between real direct coupling between fermions and uh, gravity and all of these matter fields but just study how fermions behave on already obtained the ground so and by this we can also uh, interpolate uh, uh, quasi-particle behavior. So let's uh, summarize. At first, we can see the system of uh, coupled gravity matter equations on periodic lattice. Then we uh, solve on the obtained background Dirac equations and obtained uh, uh, spinners. And then we study synthetic behavior of spinners and obtain green functions. Uh, so basically, that's it. So these are some equations. Um, this is our action for Einstein matter equations. So here is just gravity side. These are matter fields with potential. And uh, this is a uh, gauge field. So this electromagnetic field is needed uh, to describe a finite chemical potential and temperature. So in the language of uh, black holes, we can see the uh, deformed charge, charge black holes. And uh, the real non-trivial aspect of uh, this approach is uh, the setting of uh, boundary conditions. So we can, we can, we can say that, okay, so uh, the dual of our gravity side should be uh, conformal theory, therefore asymptotic uh, on the on the boundary, so here, uh, and this asymptotic behavior exactly should be uh, um, should be translational translationally non-variant. So we set these boundary conditions for uh, for matter fields as per periodic excitations, so per periodic modulations. And um, another interesting point is that here we have two possible regimes, which uh, I will describe in the detail in, in a little later, that um, uh, this, uh, this, this solution can be uh, seen like a like interpolation between two possible uh, limits, like one is exact periodic modulations, and another uh, when uh, this parameter theta is p divided by four, we obtain we obtain very very special um, uh, solutions of Einstein equations, where we completely um, um, so there is no exact um, uh, broken translation symmetry in the sense of the equations, but they uh, are implicitly um, sh shown in the Dirac, Dirac side. So therefore, we can think about it like we have two phenomena. Uh, uh, so let's say we have classical physics that can be captured exactly by uh, by per exact periodic modulations and another which neglect exact periodic modulations with intersections of brilliant zones and uh, which capture only a strong related physics with uh, uh, with non-exact broken symmetry. So this is about Einstein-Maxwell equations. And then what we do, we solve Dirac equations on this side. Um, so here we also, to obtain green functions, need to study behavior on the conformal boundary. So um, for spinner, we have this asymptotic. And uh, then we can relate it. Uh, so, so we can relate it uh, uh, different asymptotics via matrix G and 
So this matter G exactly our green function. And the trace of this green function is the spectral function. So a few moments also to say, we consider only um, one dimensional perturbation. Uh, so uh, we, will not, uh, we will not obtain exact uh, Fermi arcs because basically this equation is very hard to solve and this is our first step so just for example uh, to show you possible technical problems so these equations uh, einstein maxwell equations and Dirac equations if we can write them into a file it would uh, it would be around like several megabytes just uh, just equations symbolic equations so it's just not readable at all and And uh, what about possible uh, reg regimes which we obtained here? So one is uh, Umklov scattering due to interaction between Brillouin zones, which is captured by uh, exact periodic perturbation. And another is enzytropy due to infrared physics, and which is captured by uh, spe special uh, solutions with implicit translation with implicit broken translation symmetry. So this is uh, the result for Unclot scattering. So here we um, see in the logarithmic scale our Fermi surface is just a circle and we see that uh, the intersection of the second really so this the second fermi circle with the first one and in this region which is zoomed in here we see that there is a gap so it is much smaller than it could be predicted by classical theory and uh, uh, we can explain it uh, in the way that in our theory uh, there is no uh, direct coupling between fermions and uh, gravity. So we have only background and uh, we study um, how uh, fermions behave on this background and there is no direct coupling. So, and it, this also manifests uh, that despite the, even in Unclub scattering regime, there is some similarity with classical physics. Uh, holographic approach is, uh, is rather different. So, and uh, the following picture uh, shows emergence of Fermi arcs. Um, so these two solutions uh, here on the left side, this is a solution only for uh, anisotropy despite any periodic, um, exact periodic modulations. And here we see solution with some periodic modulations. And also, uh, uh, so the wave number of these periodic modulations is uh, higher than in the previous slide. So here, there is intersection of brilliant zone, and he, here are no intersections of brilliant zone. So what 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 we see that um, there are two 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 phenomena, like like unclap scattering and this anisotropic effects, which uh, uh, lead uh, to different amplitudes of uh, the spectral density in two directions. Um, and uh, by a transition from one solution of Einstein equations to another, we see that uh, this um, physics of brilliant zones and uh, unclamp scattering is not important for emergence of Fermi arcs. And uh,
yeah and we need to to study on so we can uh we can only study the infrared behavior without even without explicit periodic modulations and this is very important because uh, this can um, simplify a lot our equations so for example uh, for this um, uh, special solutions of Einstein equations we can consider even two dimensions so maybe even three dimensions and obtain perhaps so we, we hope uh, real pictures of fermions not only perturbed in one dimension so to sum up we can see that at this 50 correspondence uh, uh can can show and explain the anisotropy of Fermi surfaces in uh high temperature superconductors and uh, it also related only with strong correlations but not with, with one particle scattering so and for the future steps we can consider modulations in two directions or also we can include uh, as Andrew Bergroff said in the previous talk, time into the equations, which would correspond to time resolved purpose. So that's all. Thank you for attention.